Um, now, hopefully everybody that was running late today for the conference call, um, <laughs> we got to the point that you really came for. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the phone script. <laughs> um, and, and so um, I think, who, who did I have slated on that? Jonathan Yankee. My man, y'all got to know, get Jonathan up here, and I'm going to talk good about my son-in-law because he's son-in-law. Um, but come on up. We're going to put you on camera. Um, but here's the thing about the phone script is it's that connection, and that's where you can get thrown off your game or have your best game ever based on the activity. Now, what Jonathan will also tell you is he's going to tell you about how how he just dials relentlessly. Um, when he says he's dialing at eight o'clock till eight o'clock in the evening, he does it. And when you see the numbers on the, how many phone calls he's made, he he's done that. Now, don't get me wrong, we don't let y'all see the, the the chains we put underneath his desk to keep him there all day long. Um, we don't need to because he does it on his own, and it's not like he's dialing a hundred percent that whole time, you know. We permit water breaks and bathrooms and eating and stuff like that, you know. But a lot of it's just it's the work ethic mindset, okay. Um, and and so we'll share some some things about the 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 actual scripts per se, the words. There's a you know like here's a written thing about what you can do. But I want to also implore on you that there's things in there that are important, but for the most part. It's about the attitude and the pressing through and not listening to the objection so much, but listening to the why you're trying to help them. Um, to help you, John, I, I did maintain some old videos, some old pictures, right? So, you know, a lot of y'all like, hello, hello. So this is the attitude you got to have, right? You got to, you got to, you got to have, I just, I just love to dial. You got to, you got to come up there with elf, the elf mentality. Uh, such great memories. Um, you can be the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> you know, that's it is around our office with Michelle's in there. <laughs> Pick up the phone and start dialing, right, Betty? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way it works. And 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 when y'all go, I'm just going to go in this office back here and dial because y'all making too much noise and I like to be by myself. Uh, I often imagine y'all sitting there like this with the phone on your head. Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, but um, anyway, anyway, so um, I had some good old slides. This is like a, a slideshow from like December 2000 something. They're even better. So, uh, all right, so Jonathan, uh, here we're going to do, I'm going to see if I can get, can y'all see me talking on the picture over there? Okay, good, because this is off. Awesome. Can you hear good, Megan? Awesome. That's, yeah. I'm from East Texas, not Louisiana. So, <laughs> um, yeah. First thing I want to say is thank you, Mike, for setting all this up. Um, couldn't do it without you. I definitely couldn't do it on my own. So, is this loud enough? Can y'all hear me in the room? Yeah. All right. Cool. I want to make sure that's straight. But thank you, Mike. I really appreciate it. Are y'all enjoying it so far? Everybody online. I figured I'm sitting down. I feel like I can communicate a little bit better sitting down. So if that's all right with you guys. Cool. All right. So I'm going to get into some details, but I do want to talk about mindset of dialing because that's really the most important thing when you're making phone calls. It's also the most important thing staying consistent in this business that gets most people is the six inches between their ears. And it, I'm speaking to myself when I say that. So it's really important to make sure you're, th you're thinking correctly um, about the entire process starting with the phone calls. So you can write this down if you like, um, but the, the right thinking is going to lead to the right actions. You can put an arrow if you'd like, like this. And those right actions are going to lead to right results, or as I like to call, fruit, baby. <laughs> All right? Results, like good results, fruit. If you're thinking incorrectly, it, you're, just not, you're not going to take the right steps of action, and you're not going to get the results you want. I know it sounds super cliche, but it's just facts, okay? 
Um, and this is stuff I've learned from being here, you know, five, five plus years now. So, um, next thing I'll say is like Mike was saying, you do, you need to have people to talk to. Okay. So that, that can be your, that can be people in your community. It does not have to be a lead that you purchase. All right. Um, because people in your community do need help. However, being able to purchase a lead of someone who is interested, right, Michelle, is going to speed up the process of you adding value to them and then in result you earning commissions, right? Um, but I will say you, you, you do not think about the money you're going to make before you start dialing because that you're starting out backwards. Mo the money you earn is going to be a result of the job that you do, Okay. So you can write this down as well. We are in a sales role, but our job is to serve and help people. And we can't forget that. Like we're not going in there to sell. Like, yes, we're selling a, a product and we're in a sales position, but more importantly, we're there to help and serve them. Does that make sense? Uh, it's, and this is stuff I forget being in this business for five years. Okay. This is why stuff like this is important. It's why being on the calls is important because we're all human um, and we're naturally going to forget stuff even though it's the truth. Right, Katie? I mean, any, anybody who's been here that's produced at a high level will tell you that. Um, <clears throat> and then next thing I'll say is getting good on the phones is most likely going to be your biggest challenge in this business, okay? Um, my friend Katrina Gustin, she's number four in the nation. Three, sorry, Katrina. My bad, love you. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, she, she, her previous background, she, she worked on the phone. She was very skilled at, at being on the phone. So that was not her biggest struggle coming into the business. But the majority of people... It's, it's going to be probably one of the, the harder challenges for you. And it's not a bad thing. It's, it's encouraging because if you can get good on setting appointments, you can sell at a very high level because if you don't have appointments, it's hard to produce anything. Okay. And Michelle has built her book of business. Like, yes, she's, she's doing very well with her current clients, but don't forget that Michelle dialed for years to build her business to where it is now. Okay. Um, so I encourage you in that, just make a decision that you're going to get good dialing the phone. Okay. Um, and being humble enough to tell yourself that I'm the problem and I'm the solution, right? Which can be very encouraging or can be very upsetting, but it's still the truth. Right. And it's encouraging because if you're having a problem, you're the one who can fix it which means it's not like uh, there's not a secret sauce to it. You just need to talk to somebody or, you know, figure it out. There's a solution there and it's typically you most of the time. Um, you are going to have to pay a price. So whether you're part-time or you're full-time, you're going to have to make a decision with your schedule. Like these are the times that I'm dialing, right? Um, I promise I'm going to get into scripts, but this is just important stuff before I get into it. Okay. Um, it's going to cost something and cost helps you evaluate the value of something, right? Um, the moment you start reducing expectations is, is the moment you start increasing complacency. Okay. So I don't want to be complacent with the people who have asked my, for my help, right? Regardless of what they say on the phone, somebody made a request at some point. So I want to try to do the best job I can to schedule that appointment and at least get them my information. Is that clear? Um, so all that being said, it's very important. Um, so the next thing I want you to write down um, as well is I call it the four W's. I like to call the the four reasons to win or four winning um scenarios for you. So the first one is, when am I dialing? Every week you need to ask yourself, when am I making phone calls? That's the first thing you need to ask. 
The second thing would be when am I running appointments? Okay, so not, not where yet, when. So you need to know, or yeah, when am I dialing, when am I running appointments? Two wins. And then after that, the third thing you ask yourself is, is where am I running? So whatever county you're in, uh, if you're going to run a different state, that's fine too. And then the last one is what's my budget? So if you're running leads, that's the last question you need to ask yourself. Um, okay. So when am I dialing? When am I running appointments? Where am I running? And what is my marketing budget? So now to kind of get into this. So people, people send in these requests for a reason. Okay. Um, if I get, most people throw them away. That's great news, right? It's like we've eliminated the eight people out of 10 to find the two that are somewhat interested. So that means I don't have to go through the eight people to get to two people. I've already been given the two. Pretty cool, right? And that's, that's, how, lead, that's how leads work. Um, and there's some statistics for you. 100% of Americans are going to die one day. Me included. That's why I spend a lot of money on life insurance, and I actually need more. Because if I die right now, I don't think Megan has enough money, honestly. So thanks for putting on the boot camp to remind me of that, Mike. <laughs> but it's Take but, care but, of my but, kids too. But it's serious. Like it's <laughs> it, it, our job is not to induce fear into the situation. It's just to talk about the reality of what's going on. That that's just it's just a fact. Um, because if I did die right now, there's a lot of value in that financial burden not being there, right? Um, second statistic, 70% of Americans will lose their home if, if the breadwinner dies right now. That's a big deal. 70% of Americans that own a house would lose the house if the breadwinner dies. And these are just, these are just, the reasons why people send in requests. Okay, I'm just giving you ammo. Um, 83% of Americans think it's too too expensive. Okay, these are real statistics. Um, I'm not sure how much we spend on car insurance, but I know it's like at least 200 bucks. I'm happy spending 600 bucks on life insurance if I spend 200 to protect my car. If if you really think about it, right? Um, I'm not telling you you need to tell your clients to spend $600, but it's, it's not too expensive. 80 bucks a month is an average application. It's not too expensive, but 83% of pe people think it is. Now, maybe that's because they're not thinking about it correctly. Well, that's where we come in, okay? And then the last one is 85% of Americans know they need it, but only 40% have it. Why, I don't know why that is, right? But it's a, it's a fact. I mean, 60% of people, well, yeah, 40% have it, so the other 60 need it. 80, 85% of them know they need it. So there's still another, what, 15% of people that probably need it but don't know they need it, right? So there's a huge market here. And so this is all going into the fact, like, we have thousands of leads that come in, and there's tons of opportunity if you're willing to put in the time to schedule appointments is the point I'm trying to make. If you're willing to put in the time to get good at it. So when I get leads, um, if you have your time um, booked off, right? I like to start on the days I dial between somewhere between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. I really don't, I really don't want to start after eight, 8 in the morning. Um, I just don't like doing that. If you're working a different time zone, you could start at five if someone's at eight on the other coast, right? Like it, it, it's only one day you're usually booking appointments. So two days I dial, I dial Mondays and I dial Thursdays and I have pretty much all day, like Mike said, I'm dialing, I'm taking breaks, but I have intentional blocks of time that I'm making phone calls. But I have all my leads printed out I have enough people to call to schedule that amount of appointments as well. Okay. So 
I'll, I'll do a different couple of different scripts. Am I good on time? Okay. So and we can role play with this as much as you guys would like to. That's right. I got, um, I, I got the response back here. That's right. That's right. So let's say um, let's say we're calling a mortgage protection mail-in card. Okay. Let's say it's older. All right. Um, let's say it's a year old. Okay. Because we get year old requests. So I'll say uh, ring, ring. Hello. Mike. Yep, yeah, that's me. Hey, Mike. Uh, my name is Jonathan Yakey. I apologize if you don't remember this. I'm not interested. Thank you. Hey, no problem. My name is Jonathan. I was getting back to you about a form you sent in a while back. You still there? Still here. Okay. Yeah, there's a form you sent in a while back around the time you purchased to refinance your house. And it looks like you're interested in the programs that would pay that off and death or disability. Not sure. I don't think it ever got to you. Does that ring a bell or do I sound crazy to you? It was a form or something? Yeah, it's a form you filled out. It's got here your loan, 200000 with Americo. You put your birthday down here, May 16, 91. Is that the one that had phone numbers and stuff I had to add on there too? Yep, phone numbers. You got your uh, wife here. Anyways, I'm what's right, called yeah. a field underwriter through the state of Texas. My job is just to get this package to you that you're entitled to so we can take care of your file. Got your address here, 123 Main Street. Yeah, that's right. All right, cool. Hey, I don't have a lot of time, Mike. Um, so do me a favor, grab a pen real quick. Okay, got one. I'm going to give you my state license number, which is 202-898, blah, blah, blah. They actually got me dispatched out in your area tomorrow and Wednesday, tomorrow and Thursday. Only have about 15 minutes. Are you normally home from work in the evening or do you work night shift? I'm not going to be home till Friday, man. Friday? Yeah. Okay. What time do you get off work Friday? Uh, usually a little after 5. takes me about an hour to get home. All right. So any reason you wouldn't be there 5.30, you and Michelle? Uh, probably after 6. After 6? Okay. 6.30? Yeah, we should both be there. All right. Perfect. So again, my name's Jonathan. Get this out to you around 6.30. So if you notice, I just asked questions and then agreed with whatever he said. That's pretty much the whole spiel. Does anyone have questions on that? It's not so much about the um, but earlier you were talking about, and I've heard you before about calling it 30 or 7 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, I can, I can see that. Oh. You got microphones. <clears throat> oh, yes. Anyway, um, earlier you were talking about, and I've heard you before, about calling at 7.30 and having no problem, which, you know, I, I would presume you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But are we still held to the marketing laws that state certain hours? I think it's 8 to 9. No. So those are telemarketing laws, okay? okay. That's if you're soliciting someone, you cannot call before 9 a.m. Oh, no. That's just with soliciting. If you get a request, you could actually call at midnight or 4 a.m. by law. They just might not like you. We're, yeah, they definitely won't like you. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Um, so well, I, they may not like you, but if you just got an, if their normal time being awake is 2 o'clock in the morning, you're never going to catch them at 8 a.m. Right. Exactly. So, so the laws do not apply laws if they've made a request and we're just following up on it. But do you do want to start early because you're going to catch, you're going to catch people between 7:30 and 8 that you're not going to catch ever again. Just to be clear, that's why you want to start then, and that's why I don't like starting any later than 8 a.m. Because the longer I wait to get in touch with someone, the longer that that request goes unresolved. Okay, now you may not, you may need to dial late in the evening like between 8 and 9 p.m. And that's the only time you're going to catch certain people. So you never know. You just want to set your, uh, yourself up for success in getting back to them. Some people, you might have to text them because they just don't answer their phone. For instance, this week, I text and called three leads. There were people that don't respond to text or phone calls. All wanted to see me when I showed up at their house with the form in my hand. And I have appointments with them later this week. So... 
everything works a little bit. You just, you want to set yourself up to be successful. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's do. Hold on. We had another question. Yeah. Did you tell them you were going to show up at their house or did you just surprise them? I just showed up. Showed up. So I can go over that script too. Um, it's just, hey, hey, Juanita, uh, my name's Jonathan. Really sorry for coming unannounced. I was just in your neighborhood, neighborhood helping someone else, and I haven't been able to reach you on the phone. Um, do you remember sending this form in to, to my office? And most people say, yeah, I do. Actually, thanks for stopping by, or no, I don't, or yeah, I don't have time now. But they're typically not going to tell you, no, I don't want that. Okay. Um, but that's a script. Just let them know. Be honest. Sorry, come on announced, but I tried calling for a couple of weeks and couldn't get in touch with you. And I was out here in the neighborhood. I'm stopping by. And I would try to talk to him then if you can. But if not, book a time. Um, what else? Do you want to do a final expense one? I know I did an old mortgage one. New mortgage one's a lot simpler than that. But at the end of the day, the script, your script doesn't really matter that much. It's, it's, hey, my job is to schedule a point with this person and not being super excited about it or super depressed about it. Just being level, just, hey, Juanita, got this request from you. I'm the field underwriter in the state. It's time to get you the info, you know. Hey, here, here's here's the forward. crazy part, right? Because yeah. when, I, when I told you, not interested, you just kept on talking. Yeah, I said, no problem. And, and I just wonder how many people on the call and in the room just stop talking at that point. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people just say that and then wait to see if you're going to keep talking or say anything. Right. Um, I know I'm pretty good about it. If you ever try to call me, I'll pick up the phone really super fast, go, oh, and then just wait to hear. Because, mm -hmm. you know, those are predictive dollars, people waiting for it to click over to an agent and right. um, for all the telemarketers in the world. And, uh, and then I just wait. Now then I put it on mute. And wait. You know, and sometimes people just put it on mute to see what you're gonna say. Yeah. Um. You just got to keep talking. You know, I realize how calm he was, and just like you know, like I said, my name is Jonathan. He just kept on. And that's probably, to me, the biggest lesson I can take mm -hmm. out of this is, don't let what they're saying take you off the game. Right. You know, because y'all remember. Little League Baseball, everybody's out there in the field going, hey, about 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 a swing, about a, that was just to distract you. Yep. You, you can't get your eye off the ball. <laughs> you got to, your, your mission is to hit the ball. Right. You can't let that mess you up. And, so, and to piggyback on Mike's point, which is very good, is the only reason people give an objection is because they're uncomfortable to some degree. So all that means is, it has nothing to do with you, right? They could say they're not interested because they've just been uncomfortable with salespeople in their past. I don't, I don't know. I try not to think too much about that. All I know is my, my heart is to schedule an appointment to talk about their options to really see if I can add value to them. I'm not really going to listen to what they say to me as far as objections go until I've had that conversation because there are people just like I am um, it's also another thing is your, your level of service, like my level of service, I hold to a high standard, which means I need to have the conversation. Like I'm not being rude, ignoring your objection. Like if you go to a restaurant and the waiter or waitress brings you a water, but also brings you a glass ice and a napkin, is he getting a bigger tip than the wait waiter or waitress that just brings you a water? Yeah. You didn't ask for the service to be better. He just did it or she just did it. So it's the same with, with dialing. You have something, Michelle? No? You're good? Okay. But I hope everyone's, y'all, I'm making clear, simple sense here. Perfect. Um, so let's do final expense one. Ring, ring. Hello. <laughs> Michelle. That's me. Hey, Michelle, my name is Jonathan. I'm, I'm giving you a call back about this. <laughs> who, 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 who is this? My name's Jonathan. I'm with the Benefit Center in Harris County. 
And I was calling you back about this postcard I have here on my desk about those state regulated programs that pay for your final expenses. You put down here your age of 45. Do you remember that? No, no? I sure do. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm not interested. Okay, no problem, Michelle. I don't remember what I had for breakfast last week. It's okay. This was a state regulated programs. You're entitled to the information through the state of Texas. I just need to confirm a couple of things you put down. You got your address, 123 Main Street. So you say I'm entitled to some things? You're entitled to the packet of information. You put okay. your address, 123 Main Street. Yes, sir. That's right. correct. Awesome. And then you put here your age of 45. Is that right? Or you had a birthday since then? No, I'm 46 now. All right, 46. I'll make correction. The good news is, Michelle, I don't have much time, but they have me dispatched in your area tomorrow and Thursday getting this packet out to other families. So I was just calling to see, are you working, retired, or disabled? Oh, no. I'm at home all day. All day long. All day okay, long. No problem. So do you like to get up early, Michelle, or do you like to sleep? Oh, no. I sleep late. All right. So I'm in the afternoon. Okay. You like yeah. to sleep in? No problem. I got some time around between about 2 and 3 o'clock. Any reason you wouldn't be home then? Can you come about three? Because I just waking up around two. Okay, I can come at three. No problem. Do me, a, do me a favor, Michelle. Grab a pen and paper. I'm gonna give you a confirmation number, which is also my state license number. Let me know when you're ready. So first, my name's Jonathan. It's J O N A T H A N. I got you down for three o'clock, and then here's my license number. Okay. And then the last thing I do is I just confirm, hey, those numbers, are they on your house, your mailbox? I'll say something like, I'm a tall guy with brown hair. I'm a less attractive version of Alec Baldwin, skinnier. <laughs> just something, whatever, right? Just be, be a, a real person. But the main thing is I was, I'm about a third slower on final expense than I am with a mortgage, right? Like you just, you don't want to try to, I don't like the whole chameleon thing, like be them and let just be them and copy them. That's just weird to me. Right. But, but be a genuine person. And if they're in a hurry, well, you can talk fast. Like just, just match what they're doing is to, to accommodate them, but don't try to trick them. Right. We're not here to trick anybody, but it is important to, if you're talking to someone that's older, slow down. So they understand. And if you're talking to someone who's has a mortgage, they're probably busy, right? And if you get them on the phone, you probably just need to be a little quicker. Like, hey, Jonathan, my name's Jonathan. Got this letter on the mortgage for their new home loan through Americo for 200 grand. Looks like you sent this in for you and Erica, blah, blah, blah. So I'm a little quicker, but I, and he's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, I'm the field underwriter. I need to get the info to you. I'm dispatched these days. When are you normally home from work? You just always want to be asking a question. You never want to be making a statement. Same with the in-home, which Megan's going to get into. But any questions? I got to contact. I got to put it back in. But um, <laughs> it's like, why can't I see far? This is me and Michelle's uh, daily thing. Is she can see close? She can see close without her contacts. I can't. She can see far without her contacts. I can't. It's what, anyway, it's, it's one of those things. Um, so um, anyway, so uh, I mean, I can't see far. I mean, she can't. Um, anyway, I'm going to go do this. But what I'd like to you guys to do is um, maybe role play that when somebody's like, I'm on, I, I hear y'all do it all the time. Like, you know, I'm on the road. Can you call me back later? Da, 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 da. And just like, you, you know. Maybe you do the do the, the the caller person, Michelle, and let Jonathan be a responder on that. Because um, I know you're really good at just, like, continuing to talk, even though somebody's basically giving you a solid reason why they shouldn't be on the phone. And most of you are going to buy into it, but all it is is just a few more words to get you the appointment and the time. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to go put my contact. Because here's the deal. They would not have picked up the phone right. if they can't talk. So they're just saying that to get off the phone call. 
Okay. Same with someone that same different same same thing. Then phone. Same same with stuff you know in our own life, even myself included, that I know I need to address, but I don't want to address it. Right. We we're all been there. It's typically the case when someone's like, I got to get like, like, I know I really need to talk about this. I just don't really want to. And I agree with that because I've felt the same way. But the reality is it's our job to make sure that conversation happens. So it's our job to make sure we say, hey, no problem. I, you know, I don't have time right now. That's what I usually say if they're like, I need to get off the phone. I was like, I don't have time right now. I just need a time where you're home from work. Are you, are you normally home this day at this time? At least get them to agree, hey, I'm home from work after six. So you can get some type of, you know, appointment scheduled. Um, and you're not going to book every one, right? Like when you're first starting now, like you might feel like you're not that great at it, but it's okay. It's worth, if anything's worth being good at, it's worth being bad at at first. Otherwise, it would not be worth being good at. So it's okay to to make mistakes. That's one reason we start, you know, a lot of people out on older leads because, you know, you do need to put in reps to get, to get better. Like I made, I was making when I was working part time, 500 calls in a day and then running appointments the next day to, to get better on the phone. Right. So just to give perspective, you know, because 500 calls really isn't that many if you break it down in hours, if you're making 50 phone calls an hour, it's really just 10 hours of work, right? It's a lot of, I mean, it is, none of us make 500 calls a week. I mean, you see the sales call. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a point, like it's worth becoming good at. Because and that's how you, that's how you became good faster than most yeah, I people. Terrible. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I had no experience on phone. Like everyone's different right? Like if you've had experience on the phone, you're going to be a lot better than I was you, when I started. You had straight up discipline and you right. would go through and get told no 20 times in, mm -hmm. a, in a row and keep going all day long until you got to the 500 dial. Right. Because I knew I was like other guys and girls are doing well at this. I just need to figure out how to become better. And everyone is different. Okay. I'm not saying you need to make 500 phone calls. Okay. I'm just telling you my story like every everyone's situation is different like Katrina came into this business and just killed it on the phone right off bat I'm sure if you talk to her there's other things she had to improve at right obviously but um yeah so but if they're if they are telling me they're busy I'll just usually say no problem I'm really busy too I've got a two o'clock or five o'clock tomorrow what's better for you or will you be home right. after three tomorrow and I'll book it? Right. And I'm trying to get off the phone with them right away. I'm, yeah. You know, the, but the goal I'm booking is to, the appointment. This, this goal is to schedule an appointment to have a conversation. I'm fine after I scheduled an appointment and met with someone. I'm fine saying, hey, you, you know, it's been very few times where there hasn't been a need there, but I've walked away and said, hey, you're, you're fine. And being honest with that person, that's led to them referring me to people because I was honest and didn't try to push something. Out. But that was only that's only a few times it's happened. Most times, if you if you have the conversation, there's a need there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sent the request. In. There's always 99% of the time, there's always something you can do for that person. If you're asking questions and getting to know them and really trying to treat them like your own, they're your own family. So sweet. Yep. All right, everybody give Johnny a hand. Yeah. Woo! We don't have the we don't have the sound effects like Fist does.